My name's Tom Morby, I'm a ENT registrar at Milton Keynes Hospital and I'm going to talk about an audit I did looking at referrals from the audiology department to the ENT department. The reason we did this is basically because waiting lists are going up and time on clinic, time within clinic is in great demand and along with that financial pressures on the NHS. So by trying to reduce the number of patients seen in clinic, you can try and make things run more efficiently to save money and use time better. The aims of this audit were basically to try and improve the flow of patients, to save money and use outpatient, appro outpatient appointments as appropriately as possible. So to put slightly better and in line with the actual audit, we were assessing our compliance with the British Society of Audiology guidelines on audiology to ENT referrals. We were aiming to streamline the management of patients presenting with asymmetric sensory neural hearing loss, and we were aiming to reduce the outpatient episodes and expedite the management of patients with asymmetric sensory neural hearing loss. So, as with most things, there's a whole plethora of guidelines out there and everyone has their say in how these things should be managed. These range from the British Academy of Audiology to the British Society of Audiology to also the Department of Health and how they state hearing services in this country should be uh, managed. So what we actually took were the British Society of Audiology guidelines, which are um, the most widely used ones in the country and they're designed to detect red flag symptoms that require a full ENT assessment in outpatient clinics. Um, from my own personal experience and echoed with colleagues I spoke to, a large portion of the referrals we got from the audiologists were for the management of asymmetric sensory or hearing loss. So we also wanted to look at these patients in particular and see if they could be managed more appropriately. So the first cycle was fairly simple, we looked at all the referrals from audiology to ENT over a five week period. This was 25 referrals and of those 92 met the guidelines. The thing to note is that actually one of the guidelines does say any concerns by the audiologist so we actually excluded that from our criteria otherwise you'd always have 100% so it's um, any of the other reasons and out of those about a third were actually for asymmetric sensory neural hearing loss. And why do we care? Well, this is the reason, basically. Asymmetric sensory neural hearing loss is one presentation of an acoustic neuroma. This is also called a vestibular schwannoma and is a benign tumour of the vestibular nerve. It's a schwannoma, but as it grows, it can put pressure on the nerve, causing balance disturbance, hearing loss, weakness of the face, and potentially pressure on the brain stem and if left untreated, can cause serious complications. So this is just a bit more detail of where exactly it is. And as I said, it puts pressure on the facial nerve, the nerve of hearing, your cochlear nerve, and actually rises from your vestibular nerve, your nerve of balance. Those are the things that tends to affect initially, but as it grows, it will put pressure on the brainstem as these nerves arrive from your cerebellar pontine angle. So, Again, why do we care? Well, if you find it, you can potentially do something about it. Traditionally, the treatment was surgical. But actually, these days, you can use very focused radiotherapy in the form of gamma knife. But actually, there's increasing evidence as we're doing more and more scans that a lot of these tumours either don't grow or are very slow growing. So initially, a lot of them are managed conservatively with serial MRI scans. So the first thing we did when we found out that we had a large cohort of these patients was to do a literature review and this is the most relevant paper that has actually a review of the different protocols because one of the problems with these patients is that although they present they can present with an asymmetric sensory hearing loss they don't always present in that way and actually relatively large tumors can have normal hearing and they can present with unilateral tinnitus or with no symptoms at all and can just be in incidental finding on a scan form for another reason. But this paper looked at the um, sensitivity and specificity of different thresholds of who to scan and their recommendations, which is what we based our 
guidelines on was that in someone with normal hearing on the other side, you needed a 15 decibel intraoral difference at two adjacent frequencies. And in someone with an asymmetric hearing loss, so reduced hearing on both sides, they needed more than 20 decibels difference. So this is the pathway we designed. So a new patient would present if they had an asymmetric um, sensory neural hearing loss detected by the audiologists. They would then check to make sure there's no reason why they couldn't have an MRI scan, that there wasn't a known reason for the hearing loss, and if they previously had a scan, if that wasn't the case, they would then arrange for the MRI scan and complete our audit form to make sure they were managed appropriately. So the second cycle, we did the same as the first. This time it was a slightly longer period, it was a six week period, but actually it had less referrals and it was only 12. But out of these, a similar proportion, slightly less, but with lower numbers, met the guidelines, but actually none of these were for asymmetric sensory neural hearing loss, so they were no longer referring these patients, they were all being managed directly. So what consequences does this have? Well, basically NHS worked on a payment by results and there's a tariff for all episodes of care and for ENT a normal outpatient gets paid £105 or costs £105 and follow up is £63. So for every outpatient appointment you're saving, you're making a potential saving £105. However, you do still have to pay for the MRI scan and this for a MRI with contrast, which is not normally used, is £191 plus £22 for reporting. So that is one issue that you need to make sure this is still being coded and charged appropriately. So once we'd shown that we were reducing the workload for ENT and these patients were being managed by the audiologist, we wanted to check that they were being managed appropriately. So we audited the first 96 patients that used the pathway. Of these, 91 were discharged with a normal scan and that saved us 91 outpatient appointments and when you multiply that by 106 pounds, that's more than 10,000 pounds that you've saved your local um, primary care trust or commissioning group. Out of these 96, however, three did not attend their MRI and a letter was sent to the GP to inform them that was the case and a copy to the patient and two acoustic neuromas were identified, which is approximately what you would expect, although relatively low numbers to work at an instance. So we've shown that this reduces outpatient, appo outpatient appointments and saves money, but there are still some issues with it because you need to make sure that the scan is being charged and that the GPs or commissioning groups are paying for it. Also, there is a potential issue that if you are reducing ENT outpatient referrals, this is potentially reducing your income stream and these are quick patients to see, and so actually you may be saving the NHS money, but are you costing money to the department? So it depends if you're looking at the bigger picture or just the isolated department. And even with these protocols, ours was chosen based on um, the best um, evidence-based medicine. However, you will still miss some acoustic neuromas because they don't all have any degree of um, hearing loss. But that is the case, however, these are managed and not isolated to this. So where do we go from here? Well, currently the scans still have to be requested by an ENT surgeon and the results are checked by him and a letter sent by him and his secretary. So that takes time still to do. And ideally, it would be better to get the audiologist to order the scan directly, but this will need to be approved by the local radiology department and they will need to check the results and only refer if appropriate. So that's the next stage of our um, pathway. Thank you.